Hey scholars, it's good to be back with you. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how to do load shear moment diagrams with a uniform distributed load. This is one of the early problems you see in your statics class and seems like a pretty good idea for a video. So what I want to do here is I want to lay the solution out, but I also want to write down the solution process because the solution process for these kinds of problems is pretty much always the same. And if we can get the process down, we can start using that same process to uh, solve different problems. So let's do that. All right. So here's the problem. I've got a beam that's 7 meters long. So how long is that? 22, 23 feet, something like that. And 500 newtons per meter. Now again, if you think in English units, like unfortunately I do, I'm about a 900 newton person here. All right. A newton, there's about uh, four and a half newtons in a pound. Um, a newton is the weight of six fig newtons, if you want to go out and check it out. There's the working diagram. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a free body diagram. So I'm going to write the process down here. This is the thing you do pretty much every time. This is the process for constructing a load shear moment diagram. Right, this thing up here. So one, working diagram. Now, a working diagram is what it sounds like. It's all the information you need to solve the problem. And it's usually given in the problem statement. If you're getting a problem from a professor or a textbook or something, the working diagram is usually given. Now, if you're working as an engineer after school, you know, after you get out of school, um, yeah, the working diagram, that's all on you. Uh, your boss may go, here, do something with this and walk away. Well, the first thing you're going to need to do is draw a working diagram. So the next thing to do is a free body diagram. And the reason we want a free body diagram is we want to be able to lay out all the forces. All right. So what we're going to be doing here is the third step is the forces we're most interested in that are not given right now are the reaction forces. So that's step three. Okay, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's just do these things. Well, we've got this one. So let's get a green marker. We'll put a little check next to that. The next thing I need is my free body diagram. Well, if this was a piece of paper, I would draw the free body diagram uh, lower on the page. Since I'm working off this board, let's just turn this into a free body diagram. So free body diagram, exactly what it sounds like. We're going to cut the, the structure free from its supports, free from its boundaries, boundary conditions. There. Now, I just cut the support away. Do I get to just do this? No. No, I don't get to just do this. I need to replace the effect that support had by uh, adding in a reaction force and a reaction moment. So there's the reaction force. And there's the reaction moment. Now, eventually I'm going to need to know whether, well, eventually, now, I'm going to need to know whether these are in positive or negative directions. Well, how do I do that? I need a sign convention. So I'm going to put the positive sign convention up here. There's X, there's Y, and there's the moment. Now, that's positive sign convention. That's not the origin. The origin's over here, the way I drew it. But that's the, the positive directions, okay? Let me make that a little bigger so you can see it better. There, that's better. So there's my free body diagram. So I got that done. Let's. Okay, things are ticking along here. Next thing I got to do is find reaction forces. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, reaction forces. Write the equations of static equilibrium. Equations of static equilibrium and then solve. And the something we want to solve for is the reaction force and the reaction moments. So let's do this here. Some of the forces in the y direction is going to be my reaction force. Ooh, now how do I deal with this? Okay, if, since this is a distributed load, um, it depends on uh, what I'm trying to figure out. If I'm just trying to figure out reaction forces, I can concentrate this distributed load at a point, at its centroid, and the reaction force and the reaction moment don't know the difference between a pop properly concentrated point load and a distributed load. The beam knows the difference. We don't get to draw the load shear moment diagram with the concentrated force, 
but we do get to figure out the reaction forces with it. So, the, I'm going to draw this in another color here, the uh, concentrated force here, there, is going to be, this was 7 meters times 500 newtons per meter, that would be 3,500 newtons, and because this was 7 meters, and this is a constant force, that distance there just happens to also be 3.5. Yeah, that out. Maybe. There. Okay. So I'm going to use that concentrated force there. All right. So that's uh, instead of plus, this is going to be minus now. Well, that has to be zero. Well, it's no big surprise that my reaction force is 3,500 newtons. There. So far, so good. So I've got that one. Let's uh, sum the moments. Now, I need to sum the moments about some point. Well, it makes as much sense as anything to sum the moments right there. That point needs a name, so I'll just call it A. Doesn't matter what you call it. All right. So let's see. The nice part about it is there's a force there, but the uh, perpendicular distance between the force and that point is zero, so that, that doesn't uh, make any contribution. I do have a reaction moment. Now that's counterclockwise, and I've decided that counterclockwise is positive, so I can just add that in. Remember, point moments don't have a location in, in this equation. You just add them in. You don't multiply them by any distance. Because if you did, instead of this, this being newton meters, you'd have newton meters squared. And that, that isn't right. So this one, if, if, uh, about point A, that downward force wants to make the beam rotate clockwise. Well, that's negative according to my positive sign convention. So minus 3.5 meters times 3,500 newtons. And that has to be zero. Get that out of the way. And that turns out to be, if I solve... There's 12,250, that's a 2, Newton meter. So I've got that. Let's, in fact, let's, let's, let's uh, check that off here. So I got that done. We're doing great here. Now well, let's see. Let's, let's put that uh, maybe, I'll just label these maybe. There, we can we have it in case we need it later. So on my little bitty board here, I'm going to erase this stuff, and I'm going to draw the load shear moment diagram right there. All right, it'll be a little, little smushed, but we'll make it work here. So, so we're going to draw the loads first. Load shear moment diagram. Well, let's start with the loads. So let's do this. Now, the nice part about this is there's no center point I need to worry about. There's the load part. Now, remember this 3,500 newtons concentrated right there? We only got to use that to figure out the reaction force and the reaction moment. The beam knows that this is not a concentrated force. The beam knows that this is a distributed force. So that's what we're going to put on here. So load, that's going to be zero. Our vertical force is going to be 3,500 newtons. Now, I've got a distributed load down. I encourage my students, when I have a downward vertical uh, distributed load, even though it may be drawn this way in the working diagram, let's put that below zero on the load part of the load shear moment diagram, just to remind ourselves that this is pointing down, folks. You don't get to... All right, here's a... Yeah, a little lame, but there it is. Okay, and this is minus 500. Minus 500 newtons per meter. So we've got the load part drawn. Are there any other loads we need to know about? Well, there's that point moment there. Dang it, how are we going to do this? Let's move this over. 12,250. Now it's going to work. Hang on a second here. 12,250. Newton meters. So all my loads are taken care of now. All right. I've got the reaction force, the reaction moment, and I've accounted for the uh, distributed load. So 
All right, there's that. Number five, draw the shear. Now, just as an aside, we teach load shear moment diagrams this way, not just because it's traditional, but because this is a good way to understand how beams work. In the old, old, old days before pocket calculators and computers and all that sort of thing, people actually drew these and actually read, they drew them to scale and would sometimes actually read the numbers right off the curve and use that as part of their design. So they were actually solving problems uh, graphically. We don't do that much anymore, but it's, it's within living memory. Okay, so here's shear. Now, Remember, shear, moment doesn't count on the shear plot. So the shear, we'll see this and we'll see that, but we will not see that. We will not see the moment on our shear plot. This is going to be in newtons. Now, one way you can draw the shear plot if you want is you can make several fictitious cuts here and figure out what the reaction forces are at all those points, and you can plot them on here and kind of fare them in. A cleaner way to do it is to uh, understand that Shear is, uh, is the integral of the distributed load. So if you go from here to here, the altitude here is the slope here. Okay, so let's make that a different color. Uh, how about uh, pink? That's good. Height there turns into slope down there. That's because you integrate this to get down here. One thing, we have to account for that 3,500 newtons. And on the shear diagram, we're going to move from left to right. So we're going to start at positive 3,500. And I don't have to put newtons there because newtons are already taken, uh, uh, called out in my label here. And since the height is constant here, it's a negative number, but it's a constant, that means the slope is going to be a negative constant number. All right, guess what the negative constant slope is? It's minus 500 newtons per meter. So there we go. There we go. So this is zero. Now, even though my load is negative here, my shear force does turn out to be positive. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that. Now, if there's any point you're going to mess this up, it's where we're about to go right now. We've drawn shear. The last thing to do is draw the moment. And I'll get out of my, your way here in a second. Got that. Let's uh, tick that off. All right, we're ready to go here. Now, here's the problem. When you get down to here, first time I saw one of these, as a professor anyway, I started working on it and realized there's got it. It looks like there's two coordinate systems here. I was looking out of one of the textbooks, and I went to one of the older professors who said, "Yeah, there are. There are two coordinate systems here." Okay, this is very high on the list of things you probably wouldn't normally do, but for historical reasons, we use actually two coordinate systems in load, these load shear moment problems. I define that to be uh, positive moment is uh, counterclockwise, no matter what. To make this work, we need something called the Designer's Sign Convention. Okay, let me get a beam here. Designer's Sign Convention says that any moment, I'll put my black t-shirt as a background, any moment that does that, there you go, is positive. Any moment that does that is negative. Okay? That's Designer's Sign Convention, and it's been around for approximately ever. So that's what we're going to use here. And if you need a, a, a quick way to remember it, remember that, that's positive. Stupid, but you'll remember it, okay? Guess what negative is? That's negative. Hmm? Pretty good, huh? Now, I can't be the first guy who's thought of that. It's too obvious, but... So go go. Maybe we probably see that somewhere else. So let's finish our load shear moment diagram here. There. Let me get out of your way here. Okay. Does this beam curve positive or negative according to the designer's sign convention? Well, let me see. I've got the boundary there, 
and I'm pushing down here. Golly, that sure looks like negative to me. You know, we decided that's negative. There it is. Okay, so that's negative. So the way I'm going to do this now is this uh, moment right there, which is positive according to my sign convention, makes this beam uh, bend in a negative direction, negative curvature. So I'm actually starting down here. So this is minus 250. I hope you can see that. Okay, okay, good. All right. Now, after, once we've got that sorted out, everything else works fine. All right, I'm just going to integrate that to get to here. Same thing. Height there turns into slope here. So I need a, a uh, curve that starts out with a big positive slope and whose slope goes down to zero. Well, I know what that is. Parabola would probably do that. And there. Here's what that looks like. I might have got a little too close there, but you get the idea. All right. Now, if since we're integrating, remember this was a constant, just a number, it was negative 500. To integrate, well, that's something like minus 500x. Okay, so this is a zero order curve. It's a horizontal straight line. This is what you call a first order curve. It's a slanted straight line. y equals mx plus b, x is to the first power, first order. Since you integrated uh, a first order line to get to a second order line, that's now a parabola. The x term is x squared now. So zero order, first order, second order, because you start out with a constant, integrated, and integrated again. So there we go. That is how to draw that load shear moment diagram. And the best part is we've got a process now. Okay? So working diagram, free body diagram, reaction forces. Now to find these out, we'll use the recipe. We've used another in previous videos. Then you draw the load, integrate to get the shear, integrate again to get the moment. So there you go. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.